Sitting in for Tom is Jane Pauley. Good evening. You're looking live at the world's second tallest buildings in the heart of New York City's financial district. At this hour, more than 500 rescue workers are there on the scene of a massive underground explosion that ripped through the World Trade Center just after noon today, killing five, injuring at least 300. NBC's John Miller is there now with late information on the cause of today's explosion. John? Well, Jane, the United States Department of Justice is operating on the assumption tonight, on the theory that this was the work of terrorist bombers because of the debris and rubble that have collapsed from two floors into a sub-basement garage where they believe the blast originated. They have not been able to get bomb squad people down there to find the point of origin. Incidentally, this is the same garage that the United States Secret Service uses to store President Bill Clinton's limousine, the one he uses when he travels to the New York Metro metropolitan area. In the meantime, bomb experts here from the FBI's Joint Terrorist Task Force, New York City Police Department, Bomb Squad, and the Treasury are assuming because of the force of this blast, the incredible force, that it could only have been done using some kind of vehicle that could carry hundreds of pounds of explosives, a kind of car bomb as uh, we've seen in cases in Lebanon. Right now, though, they say because of that rubble, they can't get down there, and it will be not days, but possibly weeks before they can dig their way in and find the point of origin. So they are operating on the assumption that it was a bombing. And of course, there was a call taking credit for this from a group calling it the Serbian Liberation Front, but they cannot verify the veracity of that call because it came in more than an hour after the blast. Jane? Well, thanks, John. Uh, Gary Matsumoto is also there. Gary, what's the scene at this hour? Gary Matsumoto? We don't have communications with Gary Matsumoto. I'm guessing we should uh, try to find NBC's Mike Jensen, who has also been at the scene of today's explosion throughout this afternoon. Mike, are you there? Jane, I'm here. I've been talking to survivors, people who thought that they would be trapped in the building, and the stories they tell are chilling. New Yorkers like to think they've seen everything, but this was beyond their imagination. And then somebody screamed, get out! Everyone grabbed their coats and ran. From his Midtown studio, anchorman Chuck Scarborough talked to people trapped in the giant building, tried to calm them. Will someone come and get us, please? <laughs> we're, 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 going to, we're going to try to help you out, Deborah. But downtown, it was chaos. <laughs> And we just heard boom, and the whole building shook. A pregnant woman was rescued by helicopter. What was the, the worst moment for you? The worst moment for me was around the 40th floor because my knees just became like jelly. And if it wasn't for the support of my co-workers who kept saying, you got to keep going, I probably would have just sat there. I said, can I rest? Did you I... ever think you might not make it? Yes, yes, I did. Charles McAteer was on the 56th floor when the explosion hit. We went in the 20th floor and we had to get down on our hands and knees and crawl till we got into one of the offices so we could breathe, okay? That time I panicked because uh, it didn't look good at that time. Outside, rescue workers helped those who had collapsed or were having trouble breathing. Annette Zitron said it was a terrifying experience. We thought it was an earthquake. That's what we thought, because the building shook and glass started flying, and I just said to my husband, run, run, get out of here. And I knew when we came in where the, um, I knew where the door was, so we just ran outside, and then I couldn't find my husband, and I thought something happened to him. And then luckily we were reunited. Carmen Lirio thought she'd never make it out of the building. Oh, yeah. I thought I was going to die of the smoke. If I would have been there two more minutes with that smoke, I think I would have passed out. It was, it was horrifying. I've never seen anything like it. Some of the survivors were exposed to asbestos, so they were taken to a special room here at the World Trade Center where they were showered and their clothes were laundered. Jane? Thanks, Mike. Now let's go to NBC's Gary Matsumoto for a recap of what happened today. Gary? Jane, at this hour, helicopters are still swarming the World Trade Center. Firefighters are still inside searching for the injured. There are at least 38 people in a triage unit on the 48th floor. There are no plans at this hour to evacuate them. For the estimated 130,000 people who work and visit the World Trade Center every day, darkness fell about 12.15. 
The explosion blacked out the entire complex. The power is out. There are people still trapped inside in elevators. Thousands poured out of the building, gasping for air. Eyes glazed with shock, they spoke of the devastation within. There was no help whatsoever. Trapped on 94 floors all the way up, nobody came. It was smoke and then the lights went out, and I'd say about 70 floors, we had no lights. Stairwells became smokestacks. Clouds of soot billowed up the stairs to the very top of the 110-story office towers. Some evacuees say they couldn't see their hands outstretched in front of them as they groped their way down to the ground, choking on the smoke. The walls just blew in and everybody, everything went blank after that. Walls collapsed, the furniture's down. It's, it's a mess downstairs. The explosion blasted a gaping hole through the ceiling of the second sub-basement in tower number one. This is where firefighters say the injuries were most severe, a crowded stop for commuter trains that shuttle workers across the Hudson to New Jersey. The offices just above the area lie in ruin. It was a, a heavy small condition, a couple of rooms were on fire, and just a tremendous amount of structural damage. Many workers were plucked from the roof by helicopters swooping down through gusting currents of frigid wind. Determining the source of the blast could prove dangerous. Investigators say there are several floors of rubble flooded by broken water pipes and electrified by exposed wiring. In addition, New York officials fear a possible environmental hazard. The transformers that are still standing are dry, so that, that would mean there would be no PCBs or other contaminants. That's a good sign. There is significant indications that there may be an asbestos problem. As you can see behind me, the streets of the city's financial district are still choked with firefighting equipment. Rescue workers say the operation is expected to continue late into the night. Jane? Thanks, Gary. Within hours of the explosion, three miles north in New York's Manhattan, the Empire State Building, the city's next tallest, was evacuated after a report of an explosive device there. Police called it a precautionary measure. Nothing was found. Today's World Trade Center explosion came awfully close to being every urban resident's nightmare. Trapped in a towering high-rise with a single thought, is there a way out? Here's NBC's Stone Phillips. High-rise buildings enveloped in smoke. Whatever the cause, the reaction is the same. Survival. It was scary. There was nothing. We had no emergency lighting, no nothing. We had nothing. High-rise fires are the ultimate urban nightmare. They are terrifying and often deadly. 1980, the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, 85 people killed. 1986, San Juan, Puerto Rico, the DuPont Plaza Hotel, 96 killed. And Mexico City in May 1991, another office building, 17 people dead. High floors, sealed windows, thousands of people to evacuate. And as we saw today, suffocating smoke. Fire safety engineer Bob Benazzi. Is it just inevitable that smoke is going to rise up through the building as far as it did in this case? Yes, it is, because in a high-rise building, a stair shaft or any vertical shaft is going to act as a chimney. If you had one piece of advice to give people caught in a high-rise fire or smoke situation, what would it be? I guess it would be to sit still and wait to hear what you should do. Hard advice to follow at moments like this. But today, lives depended on it. Stone Phillips, NBC News, New York. When Nightly News continues, mammograms for women under 50, do they really help detect breast cancer? And George Steinbrenner is back in baseball. Can the controversial owner make his Yankees winners again? Let's clear the air. Despite what some headache pain relievers may have led you to believe, there's something to relieve pain that almost everyone can take without simple stomach upset. What is it? Thanks for watching Prime Suspects. I'm Mike Hegedus.